In this video, we're going to address um, four different topics. So the first topic that we're going to address is solving a sister of linear equations using the elimination with addition. Okay. The second topic we're going to hit is solving a system of linear equations using elimination with multiplication and addition. The third is solving a system of linear equations with fractional exponents. Or I'm sorry, fractional coefficients. And then the last topic we'll address is solving a system of linear equations with decimal coefficients. So first, let's take a look at the top equation, the top scenario. In the addition or elimination method, the idea is to get, to eliminate a variable, okay? And in order to do that, they have to have the same coefficient in front, the same numerical value, but opposite signs. Now these two have the opposite signs, but they do not have um, the same variable in front, the same coefficient. However, when you look at the y's, they do have the same coefficient, but they're not opposite signs of one another. That can easily be fixed by multiplying one of them by a negative one. And what ends up happening is that negative one gets distributed, therefore changing the signs of every term. So it becomes a positive 4x, a negative y, and then a positive 13, okay? And then when you do the addition method or elimination method, 5x plus 4x is 9x, y minus y will eliminate, and negative 14 plus 13 will give you um, negative 1. Now in some of these problems in these systems, you will end up with whole numbers as answers. It's not unordinary for you to end up with a fraction as answers. And if that's the case, that is the case. It's just you have a fractional um, answer. So here if I divide both sides by 9, I get x equals negative 1 ninth. So that's the x coordinate of the point. I still need to find out what the y value is. So again, I can plug it into either of these two equations or even the manipulated equation. Equation. I'm going to plug it into the top one before it was manipulated because it has a positive y value. So negative 4 times negative 1 ninth plus y equal to 13. And then if I multiply those, I get 4 ninths positive plus y equal to 13. If I minus 4 ninths from both sides, I get y equals 113 over 9. So the solution here is a point, the x-coordinate comma the y-coordinate. And this is a solution to that equation. Now, for part B, this one's the elimination using multiplication and addition. So not only do I need to change the signs, but if you look at the x's and you look at the y's, we'll also need to change the value, the coefficient. So you have one of two choices. You could eliminate x or you could eliminate y. If I choose to eliminate x, the coefficient needs to be the same number but opposite signs. If I multiply 3 and 2 together, that is 6. So what I would want is I would want the coefficient to be 6 for one of them and negative 6 for the other one. That can be achieved by multiplying this top equation by 2 and multiplying this bottom equation by 3. However, I could also choose to solve for, to eliminate y. If I multiply 8 and 5 together, I would get 40, which means I would want one of them to have a positive 40, and I would want one of them to have a negative 40. That could be achieved by multiplying the top one by 
5 and the bottom equation by 8. However, they will both still be negative, which means I have a choice. I could either multiply the top by a negative 5 to make this a positive 40, or I could multiply the bottom equation by a negative 8, making this the positive 40. In either case, as long as you're getting one of them is positive 40 and the other is negative 40, the y's will eliminate, okay? However, I would prefer to get rid of the x's because I don't have to worry about the signs. One is already positive and one is already negative. So I would have chosen to multiply the top equation by two to make this a six and multiply the bottom equation by three to make this a negative six. So once we distribute, we get 6x minus 16y equal to negative 14. When I distribute the bottom, negative 6x, negative 15y, and 45. When I combine these two equations together, the x's will cancel. I will get negative 31y equal to a positive 31. If I divide both sides by my coefficient, I will get that y equals negative 1. Then again, I could plug this negative 1 into my top equation to get x. I could plug it into my bottom equation to find x. I could plug it into my manipulated top equation to get x. Or I could plug it into my manipulated bottom equation to get x. Doesn't matter. They will all land on the same x value. I like to use the, the equation that has a positive x value and preferably if it didn't have a coefficient. But if you notice at all these coefficients, none of them are positive 1. So that's not the ideal case. But I'd rather choose a positive value over a negative value or a positive value over a negative value. And since these are just bigger numbers than the original, just because I want to, I'm going to choose the top equation. So I'm going to write down the top equation, and instead of y, I'm going to plug in negative 1. This would be plus 8. Then I would have to minus 8 to solve for x. And then I would have to divide by the coefficient, and I get negative 5. So now I can give them the solution. The coordinates of the answer are negative 5 for x and negative 1 for y. Now, let's go ahead and talk about what happens if you have fraction coefficients. It's actually easier than it looks. You just simply multiply by the common denominator and there will no longer be any fractions. So for the top equation, I would multiply each term by 4 because that's the common denominator. What happens is, is the fours cancel and I get one x. Here, nothing will cancel, so I'll get 12 y. And here, the fours will cancel, so all I'll have left is negative three. For the bottom equation, the common denominator is actually six. So I will multiply this equation by six, this one by six, and this one by six. So here, these reduce, actually. So I end up with 6 over 3, which is 2x. Here I end up with 6 over 2, which is 3. And then here I just have 8 times 6, which is 48. Then if I combine these, I'm going to end up with 3. Oh, I can't combine them yet. This is just to manipulate them so that I no longer have any fractions. However, if you're trying to eliminate a variable, this doesn't cut it, okay? I can't combine them yet because none of my variables are going to cancel. These are not the same number but opposite signs, and these are not the same number but op with opposite signs. I do have the opposite signs for y, so that's what I focus in on trying to eliminate. Now, I notice that I could just multiply the bottom equation by 4, and if I did that, this term would be a positive 12, 
and this one's already in negative 12. So what happens is, is I would get 8x plus 12y equal to 192. Then I could write the bottom equation underneath that exactly as it was, and I would get 9x, the y's would cancel, and I'd get 189. Then I could divide by my coefficient, and I'd get 21. Now remember, these are systems, so you need an x value and a y value. Now you could plug this x value into one of the originals, but I like to plug it into the ones that have been manipulated just so that I don't have any more fractions. And if I have a, um, an equation where my variable that I'm looking for has a coefficient of positive 1, then that's the one that I choose. But see, I have x, which means I need to find y. So these are my choices to find y if I want to avoid fractions, right? I'd rather choose the, the equation that has a positive y just because it's easier to solve for y. So then this becomes 42 plus 3y equals 48 minus 42 on both sides and then divide by my coefficient on both sides I get that y is equal to 2. So the solution here will be my x-coordinate comma my y-coordinate. Last example is if you have decimals. Now decimals are not that bad. You could do it as decimals, but typically what you do is you find the place value. Whoever's got the lowest place value. Since there's only one decimal place for each of these, then I only need to multiply by 10 so that nothing is no, nothing has a decimal anymore. If I would have had a term that had like 1.25y, something like that, then I would have had two decimal places, which means I would have had to have multiplied the whole equation by 100 to get rid of the decimal, okay? So we got two decimal places, that means two zeros, 100, that you have to multiply by. But since mine all have one place value, I only need to multiply by the number with one zero, which is 10. So I'm gonna multiply the top equation by 10, and I'm gonna multiply the bottom equation by 10. When I do that, I get 16x minus 12y equal to 68, negative 8x, plus 23y equal to 51. And just like before, we do have opposite signs for both x's and y's, so I can choose whichever I want. But I can't multiply 12 by something to get 23 without getting into fractions or decimals. But I can multiply 8 by something to get 16. I can multiply by 2. So I'm going to take this whole thing and multiply by 2. I get negative 16, I get 46y, and I get 102. Then if I put the top manipulated equation underneath it, I can combine them and the x's will cancel. I will get 34y equal to 170. And then if I divide both sides by my coefficient, I get that y equals 5. Now I can plug that 5 into either of the two original equations or the manipulated equations. Since I have 5, I want to find x. So I want to use the equation that has a positive coefficient for x and um, it doesn't have any decimals or fractions. So I'm going to use this equation to plug in the y. So I'm going to add 60 on both sides. And then I'm going to divide by 16 on both sides. And I get that x is equal to 8. So the solution will be the point where the x-coordinate is 8 
and the y coordinate is 5. And that is how you handle almost all of the systems of equations.